So Direk and Merenz just f all my plans. Thank you for that. Why Cinema 40 review was scheduled actually for this weekend, but as you probably know, Marenz and Direk released Direk Live and I had to change everything. So Cinema 40 review is already online and today we are going to speak about Direk Live. It's not a review because in three days you cannot really do a review, but I have a first impressions about it. And today we are going to speak about the setup, what you need and of course if worth the money also compare it with Odyssey. So let's do it. So first of all, I think everybody, we should give a big hug, big hug! <laughs> to my hands and of course, direct because my hands and then we have already Odyssey as software calibrations and of course they invest a lot of money in this in this software, right? But giving the opportunity to just give you another software, external software for a calibrations is in my opinions they, they deserve just a lot of respect because they want just to give you all the tools that you need to have the best setup. And I have to say that Odyssey is already a great software calibrations, of course, free. Compared, for example, to IPAO, remember, I had the Yamaha preamp CX5200 and I was pretty disappointed from this software calibration, especially in the base management. And I know that they went out with a new with update of the IPAO, but unfortunately, I didn't test it, so I don't know if they improved this aspect or not. In any case, Yamaha should be really afraid now from Marantz and Denon. About Direct is a digital to audio solution that is working already with many partners. Today Direct is a world renowned audio tech company specializing in digital audio optimizations. Okay, don't want to speak too much, let's move on on some points that I have it here for you. So Direct it will be available only for Cinema 50, 40 and the flagship separate component AV10 M10. Of course, you will need to upgrade your receiver. The firmware is already available. And after that, all you need to do is following the instructions on the direct website. By the way, I didn't have time even to shave. So I hope this week will just end very soon. So let's take a look what you need. Direct Live for Marantz and Denon are coming with two releases. Room corrections with limited bandwidth and room correction with full bandwidth. 259 bucks for the first and 349 bucks for the second one. And really smart that you have the possibility to update from the limited one to the full one with 99 bucks. So you can try both without problem and that's what I did. So with the limited one you have pretty the same functions like inputs response corrections, editable target curve. Just the limited one will have a frequency range response correction from 20 Hz to 500 and the full one from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. And I'm not finished, you will need also a tripod, of course, for the microphone. This one is an Amazon Basic, 10 bucks, and this one is something a little bit more expensive, something around 100 bucks. And is the mini DSP Umic one. It's a USB omnidirectional microphone and it's just working great. And I have experience, I have it because I generally used to work with the Rumeku Wizard and doing some speaker tests. As soon as you got it, you will have a serial number here. Just go inside the MediaCP webpage and you can download the calibrations file. There are two calibrations files, one for zero degree and one for 90. And you will need the 90 degree file because we are going to place this microphone in these directions in your listening position. As soon as you purchase the software, you will receive a email with the key for activate the license. You will need to create an account on Dirac website. After that, you can download the software and install it. Easy, right? I will let all the link in the description so you have it. And there is a really nice Dirac Live 3 manuals. I will let also in the descriptions and I actually just followed the steps. It's really clear and you have all you need to understand who. The, the setups, the setups that are actually really easy. And all I had to do, at least for Windows, was to allow the applications to take exclusive controls of the microphone Umic One. Regarding the setup, there are two ways to do the calibrations. Connecting your microphone via USB to your laptop and then laptop via network to the receiver. And this is the one that I use. I don't know if by connecting the mini DSP 
on your receiver will work. I didn't test, to be honest. Okay, we are ready to take a look of the software. So as soon as you turn it on, it will just looking for your device. So impo it's important to have the, your Marantz or Denon, what is on the same Wi-Fi or net network of your computer. Okay, no device found. I have to turn it on. Wait a moment. You can search again. It will take a little bit, a couple of minutes. So give it time. Marantz Cinema 40. Let's click and you enter inside. So as you see, he saw already my microphones. One is this one, this is the Rode, and of course the Umic one. As you see, I already loaded the 90 degree calibration files. Remember that I told you that you will need it. So all you have to do is right click and load from file and just copy the files there, the 90 degree. And you move to volume calibration. Okay, here on the right, you have the volumes of the cinema of your receiver. In my case, it's cinema 40. Now we set it on minus 55 dB. And I suggest to let it like that. Then you have the microphone gain. In the manual saying that we have to go at 100%. Okay, no problem. Let's put it at 100. And now we have the possibility to check all the volumes of, for every speaker, if it's working, right? Let's take, for example, the surround left that is here closer to me. Do you hear it? No. Crank up the volumes. Now? Oh yeah. So what you see is that the microphone is measuring this level, right? Let's read how much the microphone as noise floor is reading. So we have minus 43 dB of noise floor and basically what we want to do is achieve 30 decibels above the ambient background noise floor that's meaning more accuracy on measures so let's turn on again the surround left now is minus 28 so let's crank up a little bit more the volumes all right something like that so we will need to do all our measures at least at minus 13 as master output. And of course you can check all the speaker plus also the subwoofer that is on the end. You hear this? Okay, that's the sub. So we have the possibility to do three types of measures. A wide room corrections, a more focused imaging and a tightly focused imaging. And I choose this because I always sit on the same center position. Now we can proceed with the measures. So remember that I told you that we have nine measures to do. So the first one, it will be the main positions, right? So must be something like that. Where is your head? At ears levels and in the center of your listening positions. Then we have other eight positions and we'll have to move your microphone also on the top and on the bottom. So something here is this level and something also here. Once on the left and once on the right, front and back. And what Direct is suggesting is to not have less than 30 centimeter between every position. But I did all the measures, so let's just open the project. Load project. Okay, let's go back on measures. So I can click on each measures to see how was performing each speaker. And on the right, you can just check the speaker that you want to see. Something also nice, you have the possibility to add a delay time. It is good, you know, because I was letting 15 seconds, just jumping out from my room and let the measures do because it will be really, really loud. So as soon as you have at least nine measures, you can proceed with the filter design. And here you can design your target, right? So now I purchased the full bandwidth, right? But before the limited one was with these curtains here on 500 hertz so you can see what is going on on the mid-range and treble but you cannot play with it. so this is what Dirac was measuring and this is is the correction this one is the target curve that we can adjust it on the bottom and on the top so this line is the detected lower cut off frequency so you should not cut off the speakers selected as small on your receiver lower than this frequency. For example, on the top front right that are here above me, we'll see that the cutoff frequency is around 50 Hz. 
so for sure on my receiver i will set the speaker at small and i will not cut it below 50 hertz so i will cut it for example something like 60 or 80. you have also the possibility to play with the control points also to add more control points if you want to give uh, more adjustment to your target curve so this was just a quick basic explanations of the software i didn't touch anything I had the limited bandwidth at 500 and I just moved to file export. On the file export, you have the possibility to create three presets. As soon as you export this file to the receiver, it will be automatically saved in preset number two because on the receiver, if you push this button options, you have the possibility to select two presets of calibration. And preset number two it will be always the Dirac one, where on preset one, you can just let Odyssey and do all your comparisons. Plus presets number two on your receiver, it will give you the possibility to change between three project or presets, call it how you want. And that's really nice because help me to switch between presets one and two, that was Odyssey and Dirac, and switch between limited bandwidth and full bandwidth from the Dirac. So I did all the comparison that I was need to understand. Okay, regarding sound quality comparison, of course, I, I play all my Blu-ray, you know, this we have it always, right? John Williams, Gregory Reporter, Mad Max, Hans Zimmer and all this stuff. You know that I'm testing right now the SVS PB2000 Pro, this, this huge subwoofer with a ported design, right? Right, you have this big pass reflex ports. And generally SVS subwoofer are coming with the internal DSPs with three bands, something really beautiful if you want to adjust a little bit the problem that you have in your room. Something that I had with my SVS SB2000 Pro. I have, I generally play with two subwoofer. So these subwoofer are already on the right spot, already with the internal parametric equalizations enables because I used Rumeku Wizard and the microphone and I just saw how, where I have to correct because I had uh, some frequencies that was just boomy, right? And this helped a lot software like EPOW or Odyssey that found they safe to not have to correct so much on the bass. Moving on the SVS PB2000 Pro that I'm just testing, I didn't did, did that. I let the DSP, internal DSP disabled and I just let to the Odyssey and Dirac doing everything. And wow, 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 wow. With Dirac is a next level what's happening for example by playing mad max here there are a lot of explosions right with odyssey they are boomy sometimes muddy too weighty with john williams for example they are lack of accuracy they are not clean playing gregory porter where we have bass instruments they are lack of articulations and is the same feeling that I had when I test also EPOW that on the bottom end the corrections is not done properly. I don't know if it's the standard microphone that is coming with Odyssey or Yamaha. By the way, I was never satisfied from it. After the calibration with Direct, you can avoid to have a subwoofer with a DSP. You will not need it anymore. Subwoofer sound will be no more boomy, it will be invisible in your room and less fatigue. First measures is the left channels without calibrations. We have left channels and right channels. So let's compare left the two left channels with and without Odyssey. So we have in red no calibrations and we have in, uh, what is this, blue, sort of blue the Odyssey enable. So we can see that it's doing pretty a lot of adjustment in the frequency response. For example, these two big bumps that I have, these, these are modal resonance at 36 Hertz and 69s. So you can see that these are corrections over all the frequency range. Okay, let's add also the left channels with direct in green. Here we go. This is the left channels with direct in green. And here we go, we have Odyssey versus Direc. So it looks like Odyssey is, is more flat, right? But remember what we saw on Direc Live? We have this plus 4 dB on the bottom end. And we can see it also in Rumeku 
wizard, right? So it's working, Dirac is doing something. But what is actually interesting is not the frequency response, it's the RT60 decay. So if I compare the Dirac one with Odyssey, for example, at 100 Hz, we have a decay of 450 milliseconds. On Odyssey, we have almost 600 milliseconds. Really interesting, right? And I don't have this only on the left channels, but also on the right channels. If we look at the right channels on Odyssey, we are also around 580. Right channels with Direct, 370. Hmm. Really interesting. And I actually had this feeling moving from Odyssey to Direct. With Odyssey, I had more spaciousness. With Direct, the sounds was slightly more dry. And as you know, probably know, my room is already full treated, right? So it's already dry. So I lost a little bit of spaciousness, but what I got was much more intelligibility, especially from the center channels. And was interesting actually to see that on the center channels, Odyssey, it placed it at minus 6 dB and Direct at minus 3. So also the gains between the speakers was different. But let's take a look of the subwoofer. So here we have a subwoofer without calibration. Then let's add the subwoofer when Odyssey is enabled. So I can see a good correction around 35 Hz from Odyssey. Also below 30 Hz is trying, trying to do a, a flat curve. That's fine. On uh, 31, I have a cancellation. There is nothing that you can do there. 40 to 60. It was like a little bit of energy and Odyssey give it a little, push it a little bit up. Beautiful. Let's compare now direct with Odyssey. So let's remove the no calibrations one. So we have in red Odyssey and, and now in green direct. So direct is giving a target of uh, slightly plus 2 dB on the, on the bottom end. We can see here what actually direct was measuring, right? So here is probably around 35 was measuring this peak, right? And looking here, here we have in violet, the subwoofer without calibrations around 34, same things. And both Odyssey and Direct did an adjustment, 40 till 60. I also measured our lack of energy and both Direct and Odyssey are pushing it up. So definitely what we are seeing on Direct Live is the same things that I measured with the Room Echo Wizard, beautiful. First impressions regarding the limited uh, bandwidth, Dirac Live Limited, is that bottom end, next level. It's just a next level. You will have a improvement of 300%. Regarding spaciousness and colorations, the sound to be direct will be, it will, it's more natural, more neutral great intelligibility on the center channel. Something interesting that with Odyssey, I always had to use a nice functions that was, what was the name? Dynamic volume, something like that. That it was giving a compressions in the dynamic and just to have the center channels more clear, to have more intelligibility when someone was speaking. Something that I didn't have to do with the rack. Interesting but I felt a slightly roll off on the tribbles. The sound was really not so, so much open. Yeah, it was definitely rolled off. So I had to move to the full bandwidth. And here really nice, you will not need to do the calibrations again, but all you have to do is just moving the curtain for every speaker from 500 to 20 kilohertz. And then of course you will need to export again the measures on your receiver, right? I played again my Blu-rays and roll off feeling was disappear. Beautiful sound stage was open. I got a beautiful spaciousness feeling. Instrument sounds again as I want and really I enjoy it. Okay, now without go too much in details, otherwise this video will be 30 minutes long. I will go directly to my first impressions, conclusions. And here I wrote the pros for Dirac and Odyssey. So for Odyssey, of course, it's free. I got slightly more spaciousness and colorations if compared with Dirac Live Limited one. In my opinion, Dirac is giving the best also with 
maybe rooms that are not fully treated. But I should remove all my acoustic treatment to test this and no. Odyssey will give you the possibility to have two presets when Dirac will have three presets. Regarding Dirac, of course, bass management is a next level. Imagine Dirac like a professional calibrator that is coming in your home, in your room, for give you the best result. Well, you will be able to have all this by yourself. Next, we have a better intelligibility that I noticed that is now ultra clear with a clean and natural tonality. Next point really interesting is that you will have the possibility to have a subwoofer without a DSP because Dirac will do just everything. And that's really interesting because not all subwoofer are like SVS that are coming with a nice applications and three bands. Most of them are unfortunately not like that. And in the end, a laser focus imaging and object locations. If you saw my Cinema 40 review, you probably noticed that the step of improvement that I did moving from my old separate components to the Cinema 40 was so big in the imaging and locations of in Atmos on objects was just amazing. With Dirac you will have another level of step in improvement. So Dirac yes or not? So I write absolutely yes if you don't have acoustic treatment. First point. Second point absolutely a must to have if you don't have the subwoofer with the possibility to play with the parametric equalizations and of course if you don't have also the time to learn how to use Rumeco Wizard. So regarding these two points, Direct is a must to have. Levels of improvement are really, really high. Next for all the audio files that has a subwoofer with an internal DSP that are already confident to play with Rumeco Wizard, they know where to touch, that maybe they have a full acoustic treatment, then I will definitely don't take in consideration the limited Dirac, but I will go definitely directly with the full band one. Will make no sense to have the limited one. Of course, for my opinion and the short test that I did. You can go directly with the full one or purchase it later. It will just cost you the same, and that's, that's right, it's good, right? So from it out is all for today. I hope this first impressions was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I will keep going to do some tests and probably I will give you a full review in the future.